This week in IT, Microsoft has announced that Loop 2.0 is gradually rolling out to commercial customers, but has it changed enough to be a serious challenge to Notion? Plus, on the back of Copilot security problems recently highlighted at Black Hat, Microsoft has announced that it's providing free protections for everyone using Copilot with an Entra ID account. And Windows Recall is making a return. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure, and Microsoft 365. This week's episode is sponsored by our friends at Semperis. But before I get started, I've got a quick favor to ask you. About 57% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,200 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to about 7,250 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. This came as a little bit of a surprise to me this week. Microsoft has announced that Loop 2.0 is gradually rolling out to commercial customers. Now, I'm a regular user of Loop and I wasn't really expecting to see a big version number update here, but I think it's really great that Microsoft has decided, despite the fact that it's gradually adding these features as it goes along, to really give this thing version numbers. Because if you remember back to its launch when it first became generally available, I think sometime last year, there was a lot of talk about it being a bit lackluster compared to Notion. So I think the fact that they've given it a 2.0 release to kind of distinguish it from that original version is going to help somewhat. So what exactly is new here? Now Microsoft has moved Loop along with some of its other cloud services to a new URL. Now that's not something that you need to worry about. That's happening automatically. Microsoft is just redirecting people to that new URL. There's been some changes to the user interface. The main one being that there's now a left side navigation menu that includes at the top a new kind of create button. Below it you've got easy access to things like favorites, pages and workspaces that you've recently been working on and a new tab called meeting notes. Now here you're going to see all of your meeting notes for past meetings and you're also going to see pre-read notes and agendas for all upcoming meetings. The create new button is designed to make it easier for you to get started with a new page or a new workspace. Now when you create uh, a new page for instance you get some new options that weren't there in the first version of Loop at least. You can start from scratch without anything at all. You can reuse an existing page. You can choose a page from the template gallery, whether that's a template that you've created or one of the predefined templates that Microsoft has created. You can even describe to Copilot what you would like to do with this page and it will create a template for you. So that's really interesting. Before we carry on, here's a quick message from the sponsors of this week's video, Sam Paris. Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in 9 out of 10 cyber attacks? Once cyber criminals control your Active Directory, it's game over. With access to AD, attackers can gain control of your entire network. And if AD goes down, business comes to a halt. And it's not just on-premises Active Directory that's under attack. Cyber criminals are targeting Azure Active Directory too. Attackers can gain entry in the cloud and move to on-premises identity systems or vice versa. To keep threat actors out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, your ally in defending against adversaries trying to breach your hybrid Active Directory environment. Purple Knight is a free Active Directory security assessment tool built by some Paris identity experts. With Purple Knight, you can spot Active Directory vulnerabilities before attackers do. Purple Knight scans your hybrid environment for hundreds of indicators of exposure or compromise in both on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. Purple Knight gives you an overall security score and prioritized remediation guidance for fixing AD security vulnerabilities. 
There are lots of other changes that have been made to Loop over the last year, and that's all been rolled up into this release. So things like the ability to now share Loop pages externally with users and a whole load of other things that I couldn't possibly list in this video. But is this really a challenge to Notion? Is this new version going to make any difference? Well, I don't think so, actually. I think that we're going to have to wait until version 3.0 for this to be a real challenge to Notion. There are a few reasons why. The main reason in my mind, and something that I've said from the very beginning, is that there's still no database functionality. Now, somebody commented on one of the previous videos that I made about Loop for this channel, kind of criticizing me that actually there were no plans to add database functionality to Loop. Now, I don't know for sure, is there going to be database functionality in Loop? And one of the reasons I don't know for sure is because there's no public roadmap for Loop. We don't know, like for many other Microsoft products, Teams, for instance, what they're planning to add. We just don't know. But everything that you can see there in Loop, when you create a table, you can view this kind of detailed view. It looks like they're building out Notion-like database functionality. But do I know for sure? I do not. I don't know anybody who's publicly said that it's definitely going to happen, but I think that it will and I think that it has to happen for Loop to be a serious contender to Notion. So that's the first thing. The second big thing that I still think is missing and is a problem for Loop is while we have the ability now to create our own templates, which wasn't there in the original release of Loop, you could just choose from a set of predefined templates, that ability is still there, those predefined templates. There's no public gallery where you can share templates. And that is one of the big things that Notion is uh, famous for is that a lot of creators are sharing the templates that they create, these systems, if you like, systems to get things done. And there isn't that ability in Loop at the moment. And I think Microsoft really needs to look at adding that. Last but not least, Loop is part of Microsoft 365. When it was first released, you could access Loop for free while it was in public preview if you had a Microsoft personal account. I don't believe that's still the case. I'm not 100% sure. If you know differently, then please let me know in the comments below. But at the moment, if you want to use Loop, you need to have a Microsoft 365 subscription whether it's you know, the, the, the basic option or something more expensive, you do need to have that subscription. Whereas Notion, you can just use for free to a limited extent and you can buy Notion as a separate product. I don't believe that's possible with the loop at the moment. And I'm not sure that Microsoft has plans to make it a standalone product. Literally a few minutes after I finished recording, editing and posting last week's video about the security problems that were highlighted with Copilot for Microsoft 365 at this year's Black Hat conference. Not only did our news editor Rabia post the story that Microsoft was making available enterprise data protection for anybody using Copilot with an Entra ID account. So that means anybody essentially using it uh, with Copilot for Microsoft 365. So <laughs> what does that mean? exactly. Well, this, of course, I thought has to be a response to the story I had literally just published. And it is, of course. So if you remember back to last week's video, there were lots of concerns about prompt injections. And the founder of Zenity was essentially saying that this was like a remote code execution vulnerability, but in the LLM world. So essentially, you could engineer prompts that would return information from Copilot that it should not be returning. And it's pretty easy to do. Uh, do check out last week's video if you want to see some of those things in action. It's a little bit scary if you're rolling out Copilot in your organization right now. Microsoft is planning to address this or at least partially address the issue with prompt injection by allowing enterprise data protection to be a free 
add-on for anyone who's using Copilot with an Entra ID account. Along with this announcement, Microsoft is saying that security, privacy, and compliance controls and commitments available for Copilot for Microsoft 365 will now extend to prompts and responses. And that this isn't going to only apply to Copilot for Microsoft 365, but also to Exchange emails and SharePoint documents. Does this protection go far enough to solve the problems that were highlighted at Black Hat? I don't know, but this has to be a step in the right direction. And Microsoft, of course, is going to have to address some of these issues if it wants organizations to take Copilot seriously. You remember back, I think it was May, was it May this year that Microsoft announced Windows Recall? This was a big fanfare. It was designed to be a new feature, kind of a must have thing. And we're all going to upgrade to these new ARM based Windows PCs, not just because of the new battery efficiency of these devices. They're going to run for like 12 hours without you needing to charge them. When you put them to sleep, hopefully the battery isn't going to drain. That does seem to be the case. But we're all going to want to use this amazing new Windows recall feature. If you remember back, that really fell flat on its face. People were horrified at the lack of security measures taken. All the data was being stored unencrypted on the disk. It was really easy to access it. So if you remember Windows Recall, essentially every few seconds takes a screenshot of whatever you're doing on your desktop and it allows you to search in a way that you've never been able to search before because it uses optical character recognition on those screenshots. So it allows you to search for anything really that you might have been doing and it tries to intelligently get you back to that data or to that application. And, you know, on paper, it sounds wonderful, but the security concerns were just too much. It hadn't really been tested publicly, so Microsoft hadn't been able to get that feedback. Microsoft pulled it when it released the Copilot Plus PCs earlier this year and said it will be coming back at some point in the future and they made some commitments to securing it. So the two key changes that they're planning to make to it are encrypting all of that data that it captures on the local disk and by default making sure that before you can access the recall feature you're going to need to use some kind of biometric gesture in order to authenticate to open up access to that data. Microsoft says that it's bringing Windows Recall back to Windows Insiders in October with these new features added for a period of public testing. I would expect it to go through testing for at least several months and that probably early next year we'll see this be released more generally. Of course, it's only going to run on those PCs that have some kind of NPU, so whether it's an ARM-based PC or something that Intel releases later this year. We'll see how all that pans out with the new security features enabled. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Microsoft Loop. Is it something that you've embraced in your organization? It's something that certainly I found a bit of a game changer in terms of working with other people and collaborating on ideas. It works for me much better than OneNote, but I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. I'd like to thank again this week's sponsors, Semperis. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now that you might also find interesting. This is a video where I cover a lot of those security flaws that were discovered in Copilot and demonstrated at Black Hat a few weeks ago. So do check that out. If you found the video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps us to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. But that's it from this week and I'll see you next time time.